Welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how to lace oxfords and dress shoes the proper way. One of the things that ruins the look of your oxford shoes that I see over and over again is improper lacing. First of all, you need the right shoelaces. You want thin laces such as these and not thick laces like these nylon ones. These are way too thick. They're gonna look bad and make it look more like a sneaker, not an elegant men's dress shoe. Second, you want the right length of shoelaces. They should be around 31 inches or 80 centimeters. The most formal laces you can get are thin round shoelaces. An alternative that is slightly more casual but still formal enough to wear to the office is flat shoelaces. Choose what you like, um, they're both fine, it's just a slightly different look. The look you want to go for with Oxfords is what I call bar lacing or parallel lacing. Here's a perfect example of what not to do with your Oxfords. You have the crisscross lacing and uh, it just doesn't really work with the sealant of the Oxford. Historically, it has always been the bar lacing and lacing your Oxford that way shows everybody that you don't know what you're doing. Obviously, when it comes to laces, it's not just about the thinness and the type of lace, but also about the color. If you have a white color office job, you want um, black laces with black shoes. If you wanna to go to a cocktail party and mix things up a little bit, you can add gray laces or maybe red laces. The great thing about laces is it's very quick to put them in, they're very inexpensive and it's reversible. So you can use any kind of lace with any kind of shoe to create a different look every single time without breaking the bank. Here is how you lace it. First, you put in the shoelace to your shoe into the bottom two holes and then you pull them through. Most Oxfords you buy have five rows of holes. If that's the case, it's important to have one end slightly shorter than the other one. Um, and I'll explain why in a second. If you have an even amount of holes, like four rows or six rows, you can keep the ends straight, same length. I start with the longer end and start lacing. On the same side, Put it in, go over to the other side. You see here, over to the other side. Now, with the bottom one on this side, I go through, and I always pull them through and go to the opposite side. So you always switch. Every time you're done with one side, you switch over to the other. Now, I go through, Place it in and I keep going one over. This is something you have to do when the number of rows is uneven. You cannot prevent that. When it's even, you won't have to go underneath, which is why you can have the same ends. But ideally, your ends should be the same length. If you end up with slightly different lengths in your shoes, what you do is you loosen the longer end slightly, and then loosen the second one, loosen the bottom one, and then pull through the shorter end so they're both the right length. Once you're done with that, you tie your shoe. Ideally, what you're going for is a look that is horizontal, just in line with the bar lacing. You don't want it to be slightly angled like this. You want it to be straight looking. Sometimes people have issues with shoelaces coming undone. Instead of doing a chunky double knot, this is what I do. I start again, regular lacing, half knot. I create the loop and now I go once around, twice around and put the other end through. I adjust slightly. And you can see this is a procedure is actually very similar to tying a bow tie. 
That way I get a slim double knot that holds everything really in place. Now you can see how just simple lacing can really make or break the look of your shoe. If you're interested in getting high quality shoelaces such as these ones in round and flat in 15 different colors, click here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, stay tuned for our next video about how to lace derby shoes the proper way. Thank you. Thank you.